Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungo, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if you want us to react to something, drop us a link in the comment section below and we'll do it for your amount of breath. I don't know why. We've got a second YouTube channel, Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can check it out. We've got a podcast. Um diving in with Funny and Jesse. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel, or our second YouTube channel. We've got a Patreon and you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, everything that you guys are doing. We are very, very grateful. I hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to 666 in the Bible and Dajo. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi adada adada qatar al-ma'i fil-bahar fil-bihar So today I want to talk about uh, you know the 666 and some aspects of the Bible that uh, the, that have also become part of the Muslim mindset. Uh, part of this I will be going over with uh, Dr. Omar since he understands the Bible very well but uh, maybe he will watch this and then we can reflect off of this uh, in another episode. Anyway, so uh, what is it that I want to deal with today is I want to talk about the passage of the Bible that is very famous where there it talks about the mark of the beast, it talks about the beast coming from the waters, the beast that comes from the land, and it's two possible different interpretations from a biblical perspective and then I will give one of its possible interpretations from an Islamic perspective uh, who is the beast of the seas and who is the beast of the land this can have different interpretations because you see first of all this book of revelations okay this is very important this book of revelations what is it what revelations means wahi so you have the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Mark, you know, the Gospel of uh, the different Gospels, okay? These Gospels are the life. They're like the Hadith or the Sirah of the Prophet okay? So you can compare them with the uh, Hadith books that Jesus said this and Jesus said that and that Jesus said this and Jesus said that. But then, what is revelation? That is the Wahi. That is the actual revelation according to such and such person this is the revelation meaning quote unquote this is Injil and Injil uh, whatever shape and form it is taken to place today is what we have of this book of Revelation okay now this book of Revelation talks in metaphors meaning it doesn't say anything directly well, we have from the Book of Allah what to do with metaphors, right? Or mutashabihat. There are metaphors that can be translated. For example, summum bukmun umyun fahum la yarjun. They're deaf, they're dumb, they're blind, they will not return. This is easy to explain. But other metaphors are very hard to explain. So, uh, the same thing happened when the Quran says those people who have a problem in their heart they go over the shady verses meaning the things that are not clear and so this is what's happened with this book of revelations all it has become is a book a book of many metaphors that uh, can have many different meanings and is not very clear but we're going to dive into a little bit of it so that from a Muslim perspective you can have some perspective of what this part of the Bible is talking about okay so for this, uh, I have taken uh, the fourth episode of the Arrival series, which I'm going to start with, inshallah, okay? So Revelation 13, re remember this now. And I stood up upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Now you're going to see two aspects. There's this beast that comes from the seas. Now remember what Dr. Omer said. He said that the sea, or not for oh, sea, but for waters, he said it represents people. But here's the word sea. And I stood up on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. 
having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, meaning the na on his heads the name of blasphemy, also known as kufr. Okay, so this part kind of coincides, but all of these beasts are seen as one beast. Okay, and then I'll explain this in a second. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth were like a mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power. Okay, so you have this beast that is coming out of the water, and it has the it it it, it looks like a, a, a partly leopard, partly bear, partly lion. Right, and the dragon gave him power, and this and 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 his seat and great authority. So the dragon gave him this authority. The dragon gave him this power. So we're going to talk about this in a second. Okay. Then, And then this part, uh, it, it's not clear over there, but basically the idea is the, gr the great, the rich, the poor, the free, and the bound, meaning at that time there will be people that will be slaves, to receive the mark on their hand or on their foreheads. So you will receive that same mark of, you can say, kufr on your forehead or on your right hand. Okay. Uh, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the number of the beast. Okay? Then it says... Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. So the number of the beast is the number of man. His number is 600 three score and six, meaning six, six, six. So this is, but six, 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 what I want to say about six, 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 six is not what is meant, like everything else is a metaphor. Six, six, six itself is a metaphor for something, which I will be uh, shortly explaining. It's not the exact literal meaning of six, 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 just as it is not literally kufr on, because the prophet is the literate and the unliterate, uh, the literate and the un, the the one who can read and the one who can't read, the literate and the illiterate will both see kufr on his forehead. So it's it it may not even uh, you know to some degree different uh, variations of this. There's obviously the dajjal, the person Masihul dajjal, so that is the physical person. But the 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 system, the order, the system that he has, the the forehead of that is metaphorical for a for its the way it thinks, you can say. And this is all metaphorical, so it can have many interpretations, and no one right, right interpretation may be right over the other in general. Okay? I'm just giving you an idea. So now, let us try to understand this passage of the Bible from the perspective of the Christians themselves. Okay? So, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all authority of the first beast in its presence, and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. Also it causes all both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, that is, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Many people have been driven to wild speculations and great fear because of these famous words in the book of Revelation. But our claim is that Revelation is a book of hope, and contains God's promises for suffering people. How is it possible to understand the mark of the beast in this light? This part is Islamically correct in the sense that 
Isa alayhi salatu wasalam came with Bishara and Injil, the word Injil means revelation of good news. So this is one of the reasons that out of everything that I looked at this seemed to fit a little bit better. But Allahu A'lam again. The first thing is to understand who this beast is. John describes two beasts, not just one. The first beast comes out of the sea and is made out of multiple parts of different animals a lion, a bear, and a leopard, and it has ten horns coming out of its heads. This beast is not a new idea in the Bible, but is a reference to an older part. In Daniel chapter 7, the Bible describes four different beasts also coming up out of the sea, a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a strange-looking beast with ten horns. Far from being a mystery, Daniel makes it clear that these beasts represent kingdoms, political powers that would rule over the world at different times. In Daniel's case, these beasts were Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Throughout the Bible, the sea is often a symbol of chaos and monstrous power. And in this case, the beast that rises out of the sea is exactly that, a chaotic and violent power that rules the world. John, the author of Revelation, lived during a time when the Roman Empire ruled the world and the vision he describes suggests that the first beast from the sea has something to do with Rome and the way they encapsulated the worst tendencies of all the empires before them. The second beast looks more like a lamb and comes from a different place, the earth, which suggests this beast may seem to be Christian in appearance and rise up from a different place than the source of power. Now this is interesting because this is what Sheikh Imran Hussein calls Christ Santa Claus Christianity. This Christianity that's not Orthodox Christianity, but this Christianity that is kind of like chain, very Zionist Christianity. It's a very different Christianity. It has the veneer or the... Very interesting video. I'm very... Um, I'm following this and I really want to see how it's going to be explained from the Christian side, side of things and the Islamic side of things. I'm very, very excited, but I have to cut this video in two...